It is Monday, May 15th. Today, artificial acumen behind the overhaul of Meta's new ads AI. Also, LinkedIn will suggest new ways to spam inspiration porn. Reddit gears up to try social commerce. The big catch behind a new TV. And Twitter's last gasp, will its new CEO rescue the beleaguered platform? I'm Todd Mathen. That's ahead today in digital marketing. I don't know about you, but my podcast app looks a little like my email box. Stuff I really want to get to, should get to, but haven't had the time. I know that's why you listen to our podcast, because it's short, gets you what you need in and out. So you'd probably also like Jam. Jam isn't an alternative to podcasts, far from it. Just like there's time in the day for TikTok and Netflix, Jam provides a great way to get a quick summary of what's going on from lots of voices. A great way to start listening before diving into a podcast. Or create a jam for yourself or your brand. There's no need for scripting. Just pop it on and create one to three minutes of content as often as you like by clicking record in the app. No fancy recording equipment needed. Whether you want to connect with your family, a community, your customers, or hundreds of thousands of followers, Jam gives you a unique way to communicate through short audio, the simplest and most intimate way to connect. This is your moment. This is your Jam. Start now at jam.ai. That's J-A-M dot A-I. Well, as Meta moves toward more automation, the company recently gave marketers a look under the hood at its new AI ad targeting system, which it claims is driving better results. To improve ad targeting with limited data, Meta has introduced a new ad delivery process called Meta Lattice, which uses multiple data points to forecast likely ad responses through AI and other predictive technology. To expand its understanding of user interests and activities, the process, for the first time apparently at this depth, looks at data across the Meta platform, like the newsfeed, stories, and reels. Now, previously, these elements were measured, but they were measured individually. Now, its advanced predictive models take into account a broader range of data points to better anticipate user behaviors. Quoting socialmediatoday.com, it's basically an expanded database of all of Meta's ad response activity, which, then cross-matched with all the other information it has on each user, enables the Lattice system to better predict likely ad interest through more advanced mapping. That makes better use of all the data that Meta can access and show people more relevant ads. In addition, the Lattice system is able to better contextualize longer-term ad exposure and its relative impact on response, unquote. According to Meta, this approach has already improved ad exposure quality by nearly 10%. And since it's Monday, that means veteran Meta ad buyer Andrew Foxwell joins me to chat about the platform. So, Andrew, Meta Lattice, what are your thoughts there? You know, I think it's interesting. It's definitely removing, continuing to remove a lot of control that we're going to have as an advertiser. And it's basically Meta saying, we know better than you what people want to see. And there's some areas where I think it could be helpful, where they're replacing backgrounds and they're, you know, swapping in images. But I, I know based on Meta's track record that this isn't going to work out as well as they think it will and that the ads aren't going to look as good as they're claiming they will. And there are going to be errors and money spent on ads where they actually look like crap. So that's my overall concern. But I think the bull case for it is it will make buying more efficient and will show more relevant ads to people over time, which is a good thing. And I think that the the push that we've seen these platforms do, whether it's whether it's Meta with its Advantage Plus, whether it's Google with its Performance Max, all of these AI based campaigns are it's not like it's not like Meta is going to give you like a couple of options, like would you like this background or that background? It's going to handle it like it handled sort of distribution of, of targeting before, which is like just tell us generally what you want, and right. we'll go find the audiences. And I I think what they're doing, correct me if I'm wrong, is we're not even going to be able to see what these ad variations, the different images, the different copy necessarily are going to be. They're just going to try a bunch out. Correct. That's basically what they've told us thus far. So. You know, I'm trying to get more information about exactly what it's going to be rolled out like, but it's definitely going to continue to remove control. So that says, you know, you're going to be moving a lot of your work onto landing pages. You're going to be moving a lot of your work onto the core mm. uh, creative assets themselves. Um, and the other thing that's interesting about it is there's been a lot of, I would say, like laborious burden that's been on um, 
the pixel and domain verification, which uh, is new. And Facebook actually came out, Meta came out on Mon- on Friday um, and said, and it was just, of course, a Meta employee and nobody told anybody. <laughs> but they're, they actually are uh, removing the eight events uh, that were under the prioritization under AEM and domain verification. Oh, So that's interesting. Um, and they're saying, and we don't know exactly what the domain verification removal is going to look like, but that's going to be removed. And the eight events is going to be removed. So you'll be able to have all your purchase events and you'll be able to have it add to cart back. So that was a big burden, like an administrative burden <laughs> that's also being removed on us. So I think what they're kind of looking at is like, what's the suite of things that hold people back from advertising on Meta? And and what are the things that we can remove that are no longer needed now that we're post iOS 14 in a couple of years in? Can you just re- briefly recap the eight events? That came as a direct result of iOS 14, right? Yes. And Meta actually was doing this to be best in class and they weren't required to do this, but this is something they instituted. Um, so that's big. Um, and it's still, they're still saying it's best practice to verify your domain, by the way, but they're removing the idea that you need to do it to run an ad. So, yeah. And so the eight events are, are you sort of put them in priority of, of which ones are most important to correct. you in terms of yeah. reporting? Yeah. So you would look at it and you would look at return on ad spend and you would have buckets of return on ad spend that would make, take up a lot of the, those eight events. But now you're going to be able to have the whole list back. So add to card, initiate checkout, things like that. And you'll be able to track those again. Not every one of them is going to be tracked. There's still going to be opt-outs, but you're not going to have to pick and choose which ones you're looking at, which is helpful. So you're going to be able to look at more intermediary metrics um, that you couldn't previously, which is helpful. Just popping out of the interview for a brief moment, since you are on the regular podcast feed, this is normally where we would stop the interview. Each week, my full conversation with Andrew is on the premium feed, but this week we thought we'd give you a sample of that value you're going to hear the full thing this week and this week only. If you'd like to make sure you're getting this full conversation each Meta Monday, you'll want to sign up for the premium podcast at todayindigital.com slash premium or by tapping the link in the show notes. OK, back to our chat. Another one of the AI based and, and Meta's grouped all of their AI into this brand called Advantage Plus. One of the big areas of focus for them has been Advantage Plus shopping campaigns. They got an update recently. Can you tell us briefly briefly what is Advantage Plus shopping campaigns and what's new here? Yeah, Advantage Plus shopping campaigns um, are essentially the ability for you to, you know, say, here's how many existing customers I want to reach. Here's the percentage and here's the creative assets and go nuts and show them um, to whoever you want. The changes that have continued to roll with Advantage Plus shopping campaigns is you're getting a little bit more control. So they're starting to say, and they've started to say, potentially in the works, that there will be in the future cost controls, which there are not. They've also hinted Mm. at the fact that there may be eventually gender controls, which currently there are not. So all this is to say that they're testing it and they're rolling it out. And it is, I think, right now for direct response advertisers, one of the most stable places for people. But over time, there will be some more controls which is going to be helpful for us. So just something to mention. It's interesting. It almost sounds like backpedaling a little bit. You know, before they were sort of like, no, just just throw it all together. You know, genders all together. It doesn't really matter. We'll handle it. A little bit. But I mean, who knows if they're actually going to do it, but they're hinting that there may be some little controls because I think it's at the end of the day, there are use cases that it is really relevant and it and they know that they're, the system is potentially going to waste a little bit of spend, honestly. <laughs> So did I read right that they're planning to put the gender controls up a level into the campaign setup and not into the ad set setup where it has traditionally been? Yeah. What is that? This has been one of the one of the comical, um, you know, pieces of this that, you know, Barry Hot called out if you don't follow Barry on Twitter, which is the places for all of the controls are changing. So you have some places where it's at the campaign level for some types of ads. Um, and some types of, you know, if you, you're doing CBO, you have some that are at the ad set level. So that is actually totally convoluted now and you have to pick and choose like when and where. Um, but I think th- this continues to say, and we may have talked about this last time, if you're not testing and have not tested with your best creative assets, Advantage Plus shopping campaign, um, that's going to be a really powerful thing for you to try. So um, it, it, it does seem to serve well. 
if you're running a broad campaign and it's doing well, it's something you can run in a small sense right alongside it to get a test going. And they're going to be, they're doing a lot of innovating within Advantage Plus shopping campaigns that are tied into the stuff we talked about before with Lattice. So a lot of the AI is going to be rolled out there first because that's really the vehicle in which it's working the best for them now. So it's sort of like you want to make sure you're ahead of the game on all of that by doing it. It's just so weird, though. Like, I mean, so if we're at least in this sort of short term, if these reports are correct, if we want to have, a, you know, one, one group targeting women, one group targeting men, we'd have to set up two separate campaigns, which changes the learning, which changes the optimization. It's uh, yeah, right. bizarre. Um, yeah. Speaking of weird glitches, <laughs> so a couple of weeks ago, Meta had a, a big platform glitch that affected spend. We're just starting to see some actual refunds come in. What are you uh, hearing? Yeah, I mean, f- from from what it looks like across the board, if you look at total spend throughout the day, and then you look at uh, for a, a very, you know, accounts from 500 a day, to $100 a day to $10,000 a day. Um, th- there seemed to be a little bit of variance between those that turned ads off immediately and those that did not if they kept them running um, in terms of how much was refunded. Um, if you kept it running, it, if, it does appear just on first glance from you know the 30, 40 accounts that I've looked at that if you kept it running, the refund is smaller because it the efficiency came back throughout the day. But if you turned it off, it actually looks like you got more of a refund on a percentage basis. Now, if you look at, I looked at the averages across ours, and then I looked at um, some stuff that was shared in the founders membership. And the average is basically about 55 to 60% of the total spend for that day that's been refunded, which is way more than I've ever seen. So when we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, I was like, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> but actually... It seemed that there's more, we got more back than we thought. We and these are refunds, not huge. credits, which they usually try to do. Some some were credits and some were refunds. It depends mm. on the account. Um, and I don't, there's no rhyme or reason. I don't know why. But yes, for the most part, things, we, we've we seen most of the refunds reported. Um, so I'd be in, interested to hear from anybody else um, kind of what it was for you. But I think overall, it's more than I expected, which is good. Um, and it, it's not like people lost their shirt the whole day from the amount that they spent. If someone is a small media buyer, small advertiser, does not have a meta rep to talk to, how do they know whether they've received a refund? And if they haven't, how do they go about asking for one? Yeah, you can go actually into billing and it's under there. And so it would it's automatically posted. You don't have to do anything and you don't have to talk to anybody. So if you have questions, you can go on chat support and ask them. Um, but that's then you know that's the number that you have um is what's within billing <laughs> so it was automatically posted you don't have to do anything extra i have been seeing a lot of discussion lately that meta's uh shifting a lot of spend or at least it's automated spend anyway to shops are you seeing that and what impact does that have yeah definitely a lot of it is um there's certain instances where meta started to default the destination to website and shops um, so I, you know, check that at your ad level if you're not seeing that. Um, what, but the, the real issue is I think that a lot of us don't have shops set up like in a perfect way and they don't look great. And there's a lot of, of course, processing issues with shops in terms of payment processing, et cetera. Um, PayPal being an example. So, um, that hinders a lot of conversions. And so I think that they've been shifting, more money over to shops in the last, let's say, since the outage, because it, there's a lot of people that are discussing performance going well, and then kind of this like breaking point after the outage. And it appears that one of the big shifts is the shops uh, spend that being less efficient and taking place there. So um, you can still adjust that back. That's one thing. But it's another thing just to be conscious of that um, and uh, be aware of that. And also over time, they may force us into having shops be part of the game because they're going to continue to get, you know, that helps build their data ecosystem more efficiently and more effectively. Um, So if you don't have your shops customized, I would recommend doing so. Um, And that can be done on Meta. We've talked about that before or with a third-party tool. But that would hurt performance, right, at this point when they're doing that? At this point, I think what they're trying to do is I think they're trying to get 
um, conversions through, um, through shops. And I think they're trying to get, um, prove that it can be an economically viable place for direct adver- direct response advertisers to spend money so they can come out at the end of Q2 and say, by the way, we have, we have, uh, 80% of advertisers in the United States now are utilizing shops, even though it was automatically defaulted. And we had X number of revenue or, you know, whatever go through it. And we had a client that, you know, they, we just got the weekly report from them and their revenue was 50, 50 shops and the website. Um, so, you know, I think the shop definitely converted less, but that's where we're trying to put our dollars and energy into now, um, to, 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 no, to make that better over time. So like, yes, I think now, I think that's why we've seen one of the reasons we've seen for the dip in performance that's taken place. Andrew, thank you. We'll chat again next week. Thank you. Andrew Foxwell. You can learn more about Andrew's meta ads training at b.link slash Foxwell or his Slack community at b.link slash founders. Both of those are affiliate links, but I have taken his courses. I pay for his Slack community. They are second to none. And once again, that was a free sample of what you would hear if you were subscribed to the premium feed. Once again, premium podcast, tap the link in the show notes or go to todayindigital.com slash premium. To other platforms now, we move to LinkedIn, which continues to expand its AI-based prompt features to get users to post more. It has been rolling out its new analytics and tools dashboard to people who've activated creator mode. This shows performance trends, associated profile topics, and a list of creator elements available to you in the app, like LinkedIn Live or newsletters or CTA links. Well, now the platform's added another option to its creator mode dashboard called Conversations Happening Now. This feature includes a listing of post ideas that might be relevant to your audience. These posts are based on your previously shared content and topics that your audience might find interesting. You can click on a post to review it in detail and then consider just reposting it although with new commentary to help participate in whatever conversations occur. Meanwhile, if you've noticed a dip in your followers, it's not you, it's LinkedIn. The platform is no longer counting hibernated or restricted accounts in your follower or connection numbers. Hibernated accounts, those are profiles that members have temporarily deactivated rather than permanently shutting them down. Going forward, LinkedIn said it will regularly update all member connections and follower counts to remove these restricted and hibernated accounts. And if these accounts again become active, they will be re-included. From memes to merch, following in TikTok's and Meta's footsteps, Reddit seems to be venturing into the realm of social commerce. They're advertising for a new job called Senior Product Manager of Ads Marketplace E-Commerce, among others. The company is also seeking engineers in Amsterdam to focus on shopping ads. Those job listings state that those roles will contribute to building the shopping ads delivery team and assist in launching it in 2023 or 2024. According to a pitch deck of credentials shared with media, the platform plans to start testing social commerce in the fourth quarter of this year. Reddit declined to comment on the matter, but four marketers interviewed by Digiday confirmed that Reddit is working on these features. They also revealed the platform has been discussing upcoming opportunities with agencies. Is the new CEO of Twitter the savior it needs to turn revenues around? Linda Yaccarino, the veteran ad sales chief at NBCU, is exiting the TV world to take the reins at Twitter. But can she extinguish the company's advertising dumpster fire? According to Marketing Brew today, one agency executive believes her experience in industry connections could bring maturity back to Twitter's ad landscape. Another executive interviewed in the piece goes as far as to say that she's the ideal candidate to save the platform from the hands of its current ownership. But the report notes that the real challenge ahead involves finding a balance between limited content moderation favored by Elon Musk and meeting the requirements of advertisers who are looking for a more brand-safe platform. Despite Twitter's recent troubles, many in the ad industries hold hope that Yaccarino's appointment could help steer its advertising business back on track. Looking to give your customers an immersive advertising experience from which they literally can't escape? Telly, that is a hardware startup, announced today that it will be giving away half a million smart TVs for free as part of its new marketing campaign. The catch? Consumers have to watch 
non-stop ads. It's developed a dual screen smart TV with a 55 inch 4K screen, a built in five driver sidebar, and then a second screen nine inches tall mounted underneath. This second screen is where the ads play all the time, along with widgets like sports scores, music playback, the weather, and so on. The bottom panel is lit up at all times while streaming other content. Users also have to agree to give Tele access to their personal data. The only small price they pay is eternal ad captivity. Enjoy! Summer has arrived. 29 degrees out here today. Even the cat won't go outside. <laughs> That's hot. Thanks for listening. See you tomorrow.